video will explain end step bootstrapping, chapter seven in an introduction to reinforcement learning by Richard Sutton and Andrew Bartow. This video is a part of a series on Henry AI Labs going through this book chapter by chapter explaining some of the key concepts and ideas. A free PDF of this book is linked in the description as well as a print version that you can buy if you're interested. The key concept of chapter seven is to introduce this idea of end step temporal difference learning or end step bootstrapping. So compared to Monte Carlo learning where we sample an entire episode and one step temporal difference learning presented in chapter six where we just take a, uh, an, a state action pair and then learn from the value estimates of the next state action pairs, we're gonna look at how we can do maybe two steps of actions, three steps and so on up to end steps. And then at the end we would uh, bootstrap and the value estimate of the final state action pair we ended. So then we'll look at some algorithms for balancing exploration and exploitation, like end step SARSA, end step tree backup, and then the Q sigma algorithm to balance the uh, trade-offs between sampling and taking the expectation for that final value estimate of the state action End step bootstrapping defines a spectrum between one step temporal difference learning where we take a state action and then we value estimate the next state action pair that we ended compared to Monte Carlo learning where we sample an entire episode and then use the actual return received at the end of the episode to propagate the signal back to all of the uh, value estimates for the state action pairs. And the problem with Monte Carlo learning is that it can be really noisy. And the problem with temporal difference learning is it's not very sample efficient and or computationally efficient. So we're going to look at this range of methods in between one step temporal difference learning and Monte Carlo learning. So the idea is that n-step methods span the spectrum from Monte Carlo to one-step temporal difference learning. And for most reinforcement learning problems where we're doing this model-free learning from experience, the best methods are often intermediates between the two extremes. So this is the Monte Carlo target. Our return g sub t is the sum of the rewards experienced across the episode, and then each of these rewards in the future are weighted by the discount factor gamma. In one-step temporal difference learning, we estimate our return as being the reward that we receive by taking an action in that next step, and then by bootstrapping by using the value estimate of the state that we end up in next. And then in two-step temporal difference learning, we would extend this idea to take two actions. So we'd have reward t plus one, and then gamma times reward t plus two, and then we'll bootstrap from the uh, s of t plus two value estimate. Extending our temporal difference learning algorithm from one step look aheads to n step look aheads can help us save a lot of computational efficiency. So for an example like the cart bowl balancing example, does the state really change so much from one time step to the next? Obviously this depends on how uh, granularized you make the time steps, but the, you don't really need to update the value functions of the states from every like millisecond to millisecond change in the state of this cart pole. So generalizing the n step temporal difference target, we have the reward at the up until the n uh, step that we take, and then we add this to the discount factor, raised to the power of that n times the value estimate of the resulting state we end up in. So all n step returns can be considered as approximations to the full return or the Monte Carlo sampled episode, but then obviously doing the bootstrapping where we end our uh, series of states by doing that value estimate lookup is going to save us a lot of uh, computation and lead to less uh, variance in the estimates of the states or state action pairs. This maze navigation example shows some of the differences between one-step temporal difference learning or the one-step SARSA algorithm compared to the 10-step SARSA algorithm. So in this case, we take this path around the maze until we reach our goal state. But with the one-step SARSA, only this state will receive the reward and then update the value estimate for this uh, immediate uh, predecessor state. Whereas in the 10-step SARSA, the intermediate values of all these states will be updated upon reaching the goal state G. The random walk example from chapter six is a great illustration of how uh, two-step or n-step temporal difference learning will learn faster than one-step temporal difference learning. So in this case, we have this policy that moves either left or right randomly. So we're only going to receive a reward of one in this terminal state and zero in this terminal state where the episode ends. So in this case, we imagine that if we're doing this, continually doing this bootstrap update, where we'd have the reward at the next step and then plus the value estimate of the next state, we're going to have to run through this, get our uh, value estimate of E to be one eventually, and then D is going to have to be learning from bootstrapping on E, C will have to bootstrap from D, and overall this will take a long time to converge compared to something like two-step temporal difference learning, where C will be uh, bootstrapping based on uh, stepping into D and then using the value of E, and then overall it will get quicker to this reward of one from E. So this graph shows some of the different uh, values of N, which are, uh, you know, how many steps you take before doing your temporal difference learning update, and then uh, the alpha parameter, which is how much you update the value estimate of the state when you get new data. So this shows that using the four-step update and this learning rate of about 0.35 or something like that, 
achieves the smallest error on the true value estimates of all of these intermediate states in the random walk example. Putting this together, we have our algorithm for n-step temporal difference learning for estimating the values of states given a certain policy. So most of this is standard to what we've seen throughout our coverage of this book, but the most different is uh, in this section down here where we look at how we are using the gamma factor discount factor raised to the power of how many steps ahead in the future we are, times rewards we've experienced, and we're summing this up, and then we're using this to bootstrap our update with respect to the state that we end up in, and then we use this to do our target, our uh, return minus our original estimate in order to update the value estimate of that state. So now that we've seen this idea of n-step temporal difference learning, now we'll talk about some different ways to balance exploration and exploitation with n-step temporal difference learning. Things like an on-policy algorithm, like an epsilon n-step greedy, uh, e epsilon greedy SARS algorithm, or an off-policy with important sampling, and then we'll look at off-policy with expectation, and this Q of sigma, which will unify uh, sampling and then using expectation to trade off exploration and exploitation with n-step temporal difference learning. A common way to manage uh, exploration in these n-step learning algorithms or general uh, learning from experience algorithms is to use important sampling with off-policy learning. So in this case, we have our target policy pi and then we have a behavior policy p, and then we would weight how uh, likely this trajectory or this action is given the state for the target policy relative to the behavior policy. And then in our case of n-step temporal difference learning, we'll use this to weight the return minus the uh, value estimate update and then we'll also add this per decision important sampling in order to make it so if the uh, target policy pi would never take this action given the state, it doesn't uh, make the whole entire thing zero. Rather, it would just not change the policy by having this just be one minus zero and just maintain the current value estimate. So now we'll talk about off policy with expectation. So similar to expected SARSA where we took our uh, state action and then we looked ahead and had this summation where we're doing basically uh, the probability of this action given this state times the estimate of the state and then you know summing this up through all the actions you know pi of a given s is the probability of that action given the state and then we multiply that by our q function or our current value estimate of that state action pair so now we're going to extend this though into more into the future with our n step algorithm so at each step instead of doing some kind of important sampling and using a target policy to make this decision into the next step uh, state and you know choosing our action Rather, we're going to take the expectation over uh, the target policy's prediction and then use a behavior policy to transition us into the next state. The math of the two-step tree backup update is a little ugly, but basically what we're doing is we're doing the same idea of having the expectation, which is the probability of this action given the state times the Q value of that state action pair, and then we're adding it to the likelihood of that next action uh, given the next state. So in this case, we're using some kind of behavior policy to transition us from state to state, and then at each intermediate state, we are gonna do this expectation, which is the probability of that action and the value of that action that we have available to us at a given state. But then we're gonna weight this overall transition based on the probability of that action given by our uh, behavior policy. So we generalize our tree backup update from say two step, three step up to n step by recursively adding on this return and defining it in this way as t plus one up to the t plus n where the n is the n step that we're uh, trying to sample up until. And then we're using this definition of constantly uh, taking the expectation of each of the actions available to us on the target policy given us, given by the uh, state that we're in, and then we're adding this to the probability of that action state pair given the uh, target policy. The Q of Sigma framework is a way of balancing with this uh, important sampling idea with having a target and behavior policy with taking the expectation. So even with a target and behavior policy, you can take the expectation to get a value estimate of the state without actually sampling or getting any real experience from the environment. So trading this off, we have this technique of you could either uh, use important sampling to get the next state action pair, and then you could do the expectation, and you could iteratively do this in some framework with this sigma parameter defining how frequently you would trade off between sampling and expectation to get the value of the next state for bootstrapping the values of the intermediate state pairs. So this is a comparison between the four-step temporal difference learning with important sampling, and then the four-step uh, Q of sigma algorithm with uh, sigma being one here and you do the important sampling, then expectation, then important sampling, and then expectation. Thanks for watching this explanation of n-step bootstrapping, chapter seven in our introduction to reinforcement learning by Richard Sutton and Andrew Bartow. Hopefully from this video, you got this understanding of the difference between one-step temporal difference learning and the entire sampling of the entire episode with Monte Carlo learning and how we can have these intermediate n-step temporal difference learning algorithms in between the two. Also from this video, hopefully you took away the differences between learning with uh, important sampling and then by taking an expectation and weighting the uh, values of subsequent uh, state action pairs by the probability of taking those actions given that state. Thanks for watching and please stay tuned for uh, chapters 8 through 17 and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.